Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Belmont Zoo, where today we're going to be building the biggest habitat we've ever built in one episode. It's also the first habitat we've ever built for the Indian elephant. Here is where we left the zoo last week. Let's go. Hey, this isn't Planet Zoo. Today, for the first time ever, I'm going to be showing you the real habitats that have inspired today's build. This is Elephant Valley at Prague Zoo, which is hands down the best elephant habitat I've ever seen in a zoo. You're just seeing a small part of it here. There's another part here, and then there's an even bigger part here. We're going to be trying to replicate this, and we're also going to be replicating this view from Zoo Leipzig. I love the juxtaposition of the elephant with the amazing buildings in the background. Let's start building. First up is theming. The habitat at Prague Zoo is covered in all sorts of little Indian shrines, statues of Ganesh, things like that. I want to get something like that into this zoo, but we don't have any Ganesh statues, so we're going to have to build our own. So that's going to be fun. That's what we're going to do first. So I'm putting a little shrine together here, and then I'm going to use some of the Indian and the tropical pieces to try and make our own Ganesh statue. The torso of the statue in the tropical pack is very Buddha style. It's uh, it's pretty beefy. Um, not really what I'm going for here. So I'm actually going to use the Red River Hog to make the body and just use the legs from the tropical pack statue and then we're going to put some arms on get these all to the right color so they match up with what we've got there we've got the little classic indian statue to start making the head and then i'm just going to play around with the tropical pack pieces get something that looks pretty decent i think there's a lion statue hidden away in there as well and some of the snake statue and we want all of this covered in foliage make it look like it's been there a while and sit it in with the surrounding environment there you go, looking pretty good considering we had to make the Ganesh ourselves. Let's move on to building the habitat itself. We're going to start by sinking the whole habitat down into the ground. We're going to be keeping the elephants in using a dry moat, so this means that we don't have to have the moat as deep. And then the guests will be up on the path on the higher level on the right hand side. We're going to have two water features in here as well. And once we've got those basics in, we're going to start putting paths in so we can see where the guests are going to be and get the final shape of the habitat done. The grey walls that you can see, which will be going in a minute, show the basic size of the habitat. We're looking at around 10,000 square metres here, so it is definitely going to be the biggest single habitat we've ever built on the channel. It's going to be almost as big as the elephant complex at San Bernardino Zoo, which was actually two habitats next to each other. And we're going to be using this natural path for the guests to come in here which means we can cover up any gaps just by putting some more sand in. Just so you get an idea of how big this habitat is, let's jump up into the drone cam and take a look at it. You can see it fills the whole left-hand side of the zoo from here, so lots more building to do. The best way to build a habitat of this size is to build it in a modular style. So we build one piece and we're going to be using a hell of a lot of this one piece to finish the habitat off. So it's really important that we get it right. So what we're going to do is combine the dry moat, which is what we're starting to build here, with the edge of the guest path. Um, we're going to make sure that this is super detailed so that when we combine everything together, we can copy and paste this down the length of the path. And with a few alterations here and there, it's going to look really good. With the moat in position, what we're going to do is just roughly dig down into the terrain so that we can see what we're dealing with here. You can see on the right hand side that we've got a slope here. The reason for that is elephants are far too intelligent to just fall off the side of a moat and injure themselves but they are not above purposefully pushing other elephants off the side if they annoy them, um, which is not good for the elephants because when you weigh as many tons as they do, falling off anything is gonna cause you some serious damage. So the edge of the moat is gonna be a gentle slope. They can actually walk down here if they want, although there's some rocks at the bottom just to make them less likely to do so. And then we've got the big wall that's gonna definitely prevent them from getting out. And then what we're gonna do is decorate in between the wall and the path so that we don't have to do two loads of work here. If we can fill in the gap between the path and the moat with some plants and some rocks, then this one piece is gonna fill in both the elephant side of the habitat and the human side of the habitat as well, which is gonna save us loads of time. We're using a mixture of the buffalo grass, the Yorkshire fog grass, and the creosote bush, which is probably the best bush in the game, I think, with all its varieties that it has now. We'll dig out the rest of the moat, and then we can start moving this one piece. We just need to rotate it so that it matches up nicely with the path. And that'll be a big step towards getting the edges of this habitat completed. Next up is the fence for the guests. This is gonna be modeled on the fence at Prague Zoo. And I'm gonna be building this with the North African painted wood beam. It's got a really nice shape to it. So we'll be using that a lot going forward. Uh, mixing it with some netting from the Oceania pack. There we go, nice simple but realistic wooden fence. Uh, well, again, we'll start copying this down the path. And there we go, this is starting to come together already. Now we need to deal with the inside of the moat. Though we've used basically one piece to do everything, we're now going to make a second piece which I'm going to make a different length to the original piece that we used so that when this piece is repeated it's going to be repeating at different points to the other piece 
and that will prevent the whole side of the habitat looking like it has been copy and pasted. We've got a whole load more buffalo grass here and then some nettles at the top as well. So when we sink this into the moat and get the angle right, it's gonna give us a really natural transition between the edge of the moat and the main part of the habitat. And we're also gonna sink some of the periwinkle leaves as well just to provide a further little join between the moat and the habitat. Now it's looking good. Right, onto the trees. You gotta be really specific with trees in elephant habitats because if it's a live tree, the elephants will try to knock it down. So they've gotta be protected with rocks or some sort of barrier. As you might have noticed in the shots from Prague Zoo, the way they do that at Prague, is to have massive boulders in front of them and then grow some more plants in and things like that. It's a really attractive way of doing it. Some big logs, we'll put some bramble bushes in as well and just make this a nice little feature that sits really well into the landscape but is also protected from being eaten or knocked over by an elephant. One of the other things I noticed in my footage from Prague was a big dead tree with a chain on it. And I think that is one of the places where they would put the elephant's food um, on certain different days. They tend to put food in different places on different days to enrich the elephants to give them something to go out hunting for. So we're going to build that here. We're going to use one of the um, broke trees and then use some of the climbing branches to get a specific branch coming off of it and one of the little chain pieces to make the chain itself. And then it's time for a second fence. So we've built a fence for the people. Now we need one for the elephants uh, for obvious reasons. That's going to be a very different design. So we've got these big concrete pillars here and then we're going to use some metal bars to keep them in and then we're going to fix the metal bars onto the pillars using this piece from the Europe pack which I have definitely never used before so I think it's a mooring post it looks pretty fabulous when you look at it in the menu but it's actually flexi color so we can turn this into just a sort of big solid steel fixing that's going to keep those steel rods in place make sure the elephants aren't going to go outside of the habitat we're going to be using a mixture of this fence the moat and some big boulders as well to make the barrier for the habitat so we don't have to have the fence everywhere it's going to make it look much more attractive and then we're going to use this enormous beech tree as a bush i've just discovered how good these do as bushes as long as they're at the back of the habitat rather than the front they are really effective so we're going to get loads of these along here and you can use the three different sizes of the tree to get the bush to whichever size you need it to be depending on where you're putting it it just kind of looks like a big non-specific kind of bush bundle of vegetation and fills areas in really nicely because it's so big as you can see from up here this first part of the habitat is quite sandy what we're going to do now is move on to the middle part of the habitat which is going to be beautiful and covered in grass so we've got the lake here and then we're going to start putting in some elephant grass if you sink it down it does a really nice job of looking like some reeds and while i finish that off some exciting things have been happening over on the other side of the zoo let's go and check them out we've had our first zoo babies the african penguins have had chicks i think there's like five of them already these are the cute penguin chicks i'm always disappointed by how ugly the uh, king penguin and little blue penguin chicks are so great to have some african penguin chicks at last and the very rough and ready plaza that we threw together last week is being replaced by a much nicer one so i've smoothed out all the terrain and now we're using actual path pieces to start filling this in rather than what we were doing last week this path i know i use it all the time but it is so good because you can cover up all the gaps with decal and you can make the gaps work to your advantage so this one here we're going to turn into a little bed for one of these trees we'll line it with some faux rocks and then the thinner ones like this we can just cover up with decals get the color of the decal exactly matching the path and you can pretty seamlessly get rid of them and then any final remaining gaps will be turned into little bushes with more of the creosote bushes you can see we've got some lockers for the guests in there as well this plaza is really starting to come together let's take a look at it I love this massive ash tree, it looks so good. We're gonna be using these trees a hell of a lot more throughout the zoo, but let's get back to building the elephants. First job is to line this pool with the aquatic rocks. I'm trying to get this really close to how it looked at Prague. So we're gonna sink these down into here, copy them around the edge of the pool, and then work on getting a really kind of sun bleached kind of color into them. So we'll just play around with both of the flexi color options on this until we get it right. And then it's time to put these guys in. These little Easter Island head style statues will make a really interesting rock. So we're gonna put one in and then copy it around the other way so that it no longer has a face. And with a few adjustments, sink a few other rocks into it. We're gonna get a really unique looking rock there. It was a really tall kind of rounded rock at Prague that I like the look of, so we'll model it on that. And then we're gonna get some elephant trails in through the grass to show where they normally walk. And then we can start splitting off the third and final part of this habitat. This is the part of the habitat that is gonna be based on a little bit of Zoo Leipzig. You can see the big red roofed classic European architecture in the background there. I wanna make sure the elephant stands out against those buildings and gets us the exact view that we're looking for. This is going to be another sandy part of the habitat to match the view at Leipzig and we'll put a few dirt patches in as well to make sure it looks interesting. We're going to use the smallest beech tree this time to make some little bushes just behind the elephant fence here 
and then we'll do the same on the other side as well so we can start getting this little artificial stream behind the habitat looking good drop some of the rocks that we used earlier in there and then just a little bit of terrain painting this is visible from where the guests stand so we want it to look good this was my favorite part of the elephant habitat at zoo leipzig so i want to make sure that we do it justice you can see it's really starting to come together with the classic houses in the background and the habitat in the foreground now we need to move on and build a third and final fence for this habitat we're going to race through this because we've already built two of them what i want is a movable fence that can be used to keep the elephants in certain parts of the habitat at certain times and then not in certain parts of the habitat at certain times etc spit the bull up from the cows and just generally give us a nice realistic elephant habitat and that's the outside of the habitat pretty much done let's move on to the inside so I'm building here a fairly realistic interior for an elephant house. It's going to have everything split up into different holding cages for the elephants for when they're in here, along with some staff areas as well. I've taken the sizes for this from the Elephant Animal Care Manual. Because we were in a nice warm part of Europe and because of the way the habitat is designed, they would not need to be spending large amounts of time indoors. Elephants are happy in temperatures anywhere down to zero, really. Only if it gets below freezing do they start to get cold. Um, they're quite happy playing in the snow. So the intention is that they wouldn't be bought in in at night they'd be able to spend the majority of their lives outside in various different parts of the habitat and then this would be here for poor weather and when particular elephants need to be separated veterinary procedures and things like that rather than them spending all night every night in here i want this to be a pretty utilitarian building so it doesn't need to be particularly beautiful and it's not going to be something that is particularly visible either from the habitat most of it will be behind trees and things like that it's off at the end of the habitat but we still want it to look good because it's going to be in the zoo and we will be seeing it so i've come up with a pretty simple design but with an interesting roof on it lots of light inside for when the elephants are in there we're going to drop one of our jeeps from san bernardino zoo in as well i've just removed the branding this is still one of my favorite little builds i've done i just put these on the workshop last week um, if you want them in your zoo you can go and grab them on there and then the final thing that we're going to do is for the entrance to the area itself belmont zoo is an old zoo and we would have been keeping elephants here for many many years probably since the 1800s so i want to make it look like the zoo has saved the facade from the original elephant house from you know 1850 or whenever it would have been built so i built this classic kind of looking sign and we're going to put this on some ruined temple pieces and just play around with it until it feels like a big chunk of an ancient building that the zoo has preserved and used as decoration for the new habitat this was inspired by something i saw at london zoo the centerpiece of the zoo for many years was the lion house classic bit of 18th century looks absolutely awful to us now but was a really good way of seeing every species of big cat in a very small space and when the zoo finally replaced it at the end of the 1960s with a much more modern habitat they kept the lion house sign and built it into the concrete facade of the new habitat and even today in land of the lions which is the zoo's latest lion habitat which is absolutely amazing if you've never seen it you can still see the original lion house sign there i thought that was a great idea and i wanted to replicate that here i love little touches like this trying to give the zoo a sense of history even though uh, we're just building it as we speak uh, we're going to put some more rubble in here as well to really start to make this look old and like it was part of a building that no longer exists they're so big these temple pieces i hardly ever use them but when you've got something um, that requires this kind of size they do look really good this is pretty much all the same temple ruins piece by the way i think it's the steps just depends on which way you rotate it you get different uh, broken bits and then we're just highlighting the broken bits and having those to the fore we're just going to add one decal to this as well just to further enhance the decrepit kind of look i almost forgot we just hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel that is absolutely amazing i did not think that that would be something that would be happening when i started this channel thank you so much for subscribing if you have and if you haven't already then uh, you know what to do and now we finish the sign we can sit it next to the path and build a little forest around it so that as the guests walk into the elephant habitat they merge through the forest past the old elephant sign and then see the splendor of the new elephant habitat in front of them and that's it let's take a look at it i wanted this entrance to be really peaceful and i think we've achieved that here and then as you get closer to the habitat the similarity to prague becomes more apparent there's our little ganesh statue with apologies to any indian viewers we've done the best with the pieces available to us now let's check out the whole habitat we're going to do a big fly through past our herd of cows and then into the final part of the habitat where our bull is currently residing this is the part of the habitat modeled on zoo leipzig and as the camera spins around i think we've done a good job of replicating that view that we saw at the start of the video very pleased with that let's check out the elephants in more detail i did not realize that they actually ate the food on the floor that's how long it's been since i saw an indian elephant in this game they look absolutely amazing 
Here's a little shot of their indoor area as well. This is where we started today. And wow, that is a lot of building in one episode. If you're wondering what the even bigger habitat marked out on the back of the map is, well, you just have to keep wondering. Thank you so much for watching as always. Thank you to everyone who has joined the Explorers Club and I'll see you again next week for some more Planet Zoo.